Let's start with the absolute star of the show, Timmy. Timmy! Why don't we give it a trim in three, two, one, now. And that's how easy it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Look, they all crowd around it. They all want a piece. Tap, tap, tap. There we go. Look, he knows it's coming. He's getting. It's already open in his mouth. What's going on, guys? Welcome. Why am I holding the remote? What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another full tour of both my studios. I have got. Well, I don't even know. I'll put it in the title of this video. I've got a lot of tanks. And this is actually the second sort of full tour I've done. I'll leave a link to the, the full four tour. Full four, full four. Oh, this is going to be difficult, isn't it? I'll leave a link to the first full tour above. Um, that's doing really well. It's like a quarter, quarter of a million views. So you guys obviously enjoyed it. I keep getting tons of people asking for an update. So let's do this. Loads has changed. Where to start, where to start? I'll tell you what, let's start with the absolute star of the show, Timmy. Timmy! So Timmy, as many of you know, is my musk turtle. He is pretty much my mascot. He's absolutely fantastic. He's so fun, he's so nice. Uh, this is his aquarium. Sorry, I'm not even showing you the tank, just zooming in. So this has been set up for, oh, what's, what do we reckon? Not, not a huge amount of time, about a month. About a month now, yeah. I think it's exactly a month since I actually put Timmy in, and it's doing really, really, really well. I absolutely love it. The moss has just—it's just come along so much. It's growing itself now up, up all the surfaces. And look at this little twig I put in here. That—that's new. It's just growing like a, a, a something out of it. I mean, it's a leaf. Is that going to be a new tree? I mean, that'd be interesting, wouldn't it? The tree in here so i added these bromeliads at a later date they're growing so well except for those couple of leaves that are so close to the heat lamp but you know something's got to give isn't it <laughs> we've got brand new growth all going on here that's so bright let me turn the light off for a second there we go there we go so these are all brand new leaves that are uh, growing so so there it's all sat basically i made little cups that the plants sit in and the cups then sit on top of some like aqua soil and mosses and the irrigation system is just like water is that the right word irrigation system i think so anyway it drips through you can see there look i've got uh, let me zoom manual zoom there you go you can see the um the filter floss like sort of underneath the layer then there's aqua soil then mosses on top and the water just sort of finds its way through and into the uh, cardboard cups that i had and that just keeps everything nice and moist and growing and yeah it's doing really well that's new sort of shoots growing out as well there right in the center of the screen next to that bromelia that's new that's all just growing out the moss which is great <laughs> yeah i absolutely love the tank recently i did a water change on it so the uh, the water isn't quite as tanned as it was I think it's probably a bit better. You know, you want some tannings to give it that sort of natural boggy swampy look. And we've got five white cloud mountain minnows. I mean, there's only four there. Oh, there he is. <laughs> I'm worried there for a second. I've got two auto sink lists, two or three. I can't even remember what I put in now, but yeah, they're keeping it all nice and clean. And the, um, I, I think the, since adding the fish in with Timmy, he's always out. Before he used to hide quite a bit, but now I, I don't know what it is. Maybe he's in full hunting mode all the time. You do not stand a chance. I will kill all of you. No, no, he's way too slow. <laughs> but yeah, it's really good having some fish in with him, I think. I just, I enjoy the skate more and it, I feel like he behaves better with fish in there as well. But don't get me wrong, turtles will absolutely eat fish at any opportunity if they're quick enough. He's just young and he can't. <laughs> So this bad boy right here, guys, is my Dutch hybrid aquarium. <laughs> right, what on earth does that mean? So traditionally, a Dutch style aquarium is like plants only, and you have them sort of staggered in sections, kind of like what I've got going on here. They don't usually have any hardscape, but I decided I like hardscape. So I added some and just called it a hybrid. <laughs> Why not? Now, usually it's really hard to do what I've done here without CO2, but there's a combination of things going on. One, I've got really good sort of water that has half decent levels of CO2 in the background. Nothing like injected, but it does mean that I can grow plants quite well. Lucky me. Number two, we've got a decent level of light. It's not high. It's not low. It's somewhere in the middle. 
How do you know that? Well, the par levels will tell you, but also, I, I don't really know what all that means, if I'm honest, but I know just by looking at stuff now, I can tell what's a medium light, what's a low light, what's a high light. Now, if you run a tank on high light without CO2, most of the time you're gonna run into like some problems. So that's why I think it's really good to have a medium light, lots of plants, and this is where one of the key factors that come in, the supplementation. So for this tank, I use CO2 booster from API, this one here, and I use the API leaf zone as well. Now, I used to do that after I'd done sort of water changes, and that was because I'm really lazy and didn't like undoing the bottle and every day and pouring out little amounts. So what I've done is I've upcycled some old sort of soap dispensers. If you're gonna do this guys, make sure you clean them out properly. I shouldn't have to say that, should I? But I do. <laughs> anyway, so we've got leaf zone. We've got, C oh, they're the wrong way around. There we go, we've got leaf zone and CO2. Uh, I've got loads of other stuff here. We're gonna be showing you what I use throughout the whole video. This video is obviously sponsored by API. They sponsor the channel as well as Aquarian who provide all my food as well, which is awesome. So, you know, this stuff I use regularly on the daily, so it's only fair to sort of show that in, in a whole video as well, just so you guys don't sit there and think, oh, all MD does is fill his tank up with water and it just turns out like this, because that isn't quite the case. Don't get me wrong, as you guys have seen in the past, I can do a, a whole aquarium without any sort of supplements at all and it does well but there's a difference between well and and that isn't there and the difference is what you choose to add into the water and how often so because i've got these cool sort of like pump action things every day on a tank this size i'll do two squirts on a nano tank like okay for instance like one of these up here we'll get to these in a bit um, i'll do one squirt on a nano and then on a big tank like this four foot one here again we're going to get to all of this i'll do three squirts every day So yeah, the main idea behind this tank is it's a grow out tank that I can just take trimmings of for other setups, but it looks so pretty, I don't want to trim it. <laughs> That's the problem, isn't it? We've got some great plants down here, guys. We've got that right there in the center is the Rotala HRA, and that's just looking beautiful. And right next to it is the Ludwigia Palustria Super Red, Rotala Rotundifolia. So you can see the difference between the HRA there and the Rotundifolia behind it. The Rotundifolia starts to get these nice sort of pink tops to it as they get closer to the light. The HRA is red already down low where the light levels are lower. And then right behind that there, look, is the Rotala Green. So that's the difference between the three of them. They're all technically the same plant, but sort of variations in color. <laughs> That's about it really. So I don't have any sort of feature fish in this tank. I have got the usual cleanup crew. I think I've got about five autosync lists. I've got five um, and mano shrimp. Where are they? Where are the mano shrimp? <laughs> well, I can't see any right now, but they are in here. I've got one nearite snail, and then there's quite a lot of the uh, ram's horn snails as well, which are my absolute favorite snail, by the way. They breed really easy, but the numbers are always controlled by the amount of waste in the tank. That's pretty much the same with most snails, to be honest. So at one point, this tank did absolutely bloom and the whole sort of glass was just covered in baby uh, ramshorn snails, but it, it levels itself out over time, providing you don't overfeed the tank. So in terms of feeding the tank, before when it was brand new and there wasn't any sort of algae, you can see now there's a good little coating of algae on the rocks. Before that, I used the uh, algae wafers, you can see there from Aquarian. I'll be using them in other tanks coming up so we can see that later, but basically I just break up one of the little tablets sprinkle it in the foreground that's mainly so i can see if it's all eaten or not and then clean up any waste yeah but there's only sort of algae is in there so i don't need to do any other feeding for this tank in terms of filtration there's just a hang on the back filter and a sort of medium level light i'd say they come with the set this is a one set from superfish great little set but yeah i need to move on don't i i've got so many tanks to get through um okay down below it down here we've got the pirate ship aquarium you could only just about see a pirate ship now because classic me i've let it grow i just like the plants if i'm honest and they do look good don't they the colors in this i, I was going for the sort of like lots of different punchy colors and i was just trying to show that you could put like fun inverted comments stuff into an aquarium and it still looked decent with plants because most people seem to think oh, if you put a pirate ship in then you've got our fake plants well no look, I, I think it's working quite well the shipwreck on the shoreline or something like that i don't know <laughs> But yeah, same as the one above here, we use the API leaf zone and the CO2 booster, two squirts of each. 
And with these pump bottles, that basically works out what they recommend. Just go by the recommendations, what APIs say, you can't go wrong with it. But yeah, this tank is housing some amazing looking green resboras, isn't it? Oh, they're so nice. And also I've got about 10 of the uh, grade S, is it? Yeah, I think it's grade S. Uh, crystal red shrimp, which aren't red, they're just white. And that's why they're high grade apparently, I don't know. <laughs> Not really a fan of all of that. I like the red shrimp, if I'm honest. But yeah, it's a nice little tank. There's not really much more to talk about, really. I'm going to change it soon. It's had its day, and I've enjoyed it. I want to do something really cool for these green sporas. So spinning around and up next, we have got the infamous pearlweed tank, also known as the Asian Fish Aquarium. These are all Asian fish, apart from the guppies, which I took out of another tank, but they're doing well in here. They're nice and colorful, endless. They're not guppies, they're enders. Ender guppy, oh, you know, guppies, endless. It's the same thing, in it? They're small guppies, basically. <laughs> Some people are gonna hate that I said that. Anyway, yeah, so as you can see, it has all grown back so fast again. This is basically I, how I think it looks best, but within a week, this will be overgrown and the plant underneath will suffer. So why don't we give it a trim in three, two, one, now. And that's how easy it is. <laughs> no, that took about an hour. <laughs> so the magic of editing, eh? But yeah, so this is like pearl weed at the bottom here. It grows crazy fast. For some reason, it, my plants grow amazingly well without any CO2. Every single tank you see doesn't use CO2. I think that's because I've got decent background levels in my water my tap water now they're not the same level as injected co2 by any means but they are pretty decent so all plants seem to grow quite well a lot of people say how do i get red in my tank without co2 well red doesn't add, isn't a requirement for co2 it's just light intensity so obviously the, the closer the plants are to the light the more red they'll go so these these plants up here that's rotala rotunda folia uh, which is usually sort of like a a paleo green, I guess. Well, it's close to the light look, so it goes pink, and that's the same with all plants. So yeah, in this tank, we've got some harlequin rasboras. We've got, that is a powder blue female garami, otosynclis. We've also got a load of other garamis as well. We've got honey garamis. We've got red robin garamis. I'm sure they'll turn up at some point. I've just scared the hell out of them. So they've all sort of hidden, but they'll show up in a minute. I tell you what, let's get a good feeding going on. And for that, I use this one. So this is the tropical temperate flake food from Aquarian. Really, really good stuff. The good thing about flake food is that when you feed it, it doesn't cause a mess. It doesn't sort of pollute the water, that sort of thing. Look, watch this. And as always, I knock on my tank to alert all of my fish that there's food in the water column and they all normally know to come here. So yeah, most of them already are. Look. So oh yeah, you can see the Siamese algae eaters there as well. Another reason the tank looks so good. There's a lot of Amanos in here as well, but you can't see them at the moment. I really want to see the other Grammys as well, but they're not turning up at the... Oh, oh. We've got a stray bit of uh, pearl weed. If that's the only bit after that big trim, then I'm going to be happy. Hey, there's a honey. There's a honey grammy over in the background there. So the honeys, for some reason, tend to hang around this back area. I've got no idea why. I just, I guess that's just where they've set up their own little territory. And that's absolutely fine, as long as there's no arguments. And I've not seen any fighting in this tank at all. So it's, yes, yeah, a massively peaceful community aquarium. So on the end of the tank, I keep all my filming equipment so I can just come and grab it quickly. We've got a gimbal there all the different lenses and soundy things and boring stuff. But yeah, this is a great view though. This is one of my absolute favorite views of the tank. Just looking down it like this, it looks so good, doesn't it? So yeah, I think you can see it's got like a central island and then a, a pearl weed carpet, like I've said before. But the funny thing is when I made this, it was just a couple of little dots of pearl weed about six months ago, just in some tiny little places and it just went nuts which i didn't know it did at the time i just thought it would be like little bushes if you like but no it's done this which is great so this is my desk area you can see i'm currently editing this video as well as we speak it's a really nice place to sit and work and you've got the tank to the left there well, you used to have the tank in front of me as well, but I've got this dual screen sort of set up. This monitor is like color calibrated versus the gaming laptop, which I use for actual editing because that's not important. Why am I talking about that? <laughs> so yeah, that's this tank and it's got two filters running it. One of them is expensive. It's the Oase one. So it's got like a heater built into it. So that's why you can't see any sort of heating in this section. Um, and the other one's a nice cheap budget one. So it's got two inlet and outlets either side and the it, the flow seems to go across the top like that and it swoops back round oh that's probably made you dizzy sorry <laughs> but yeah it's quite a simple setup and it just works really really well
Next up, we have got the Nano River Aquarium. So I built this, oh, a couple of months ago now. You can see it's it's turned into a real naturalistic looking tank. There you, go, you can see there now, that's a Pandagara. He's absolutely awesome. It's only recently actually saw these fish for the first time for this tank, in fact. Up until then, I, I didn't know they existed, but they are absolutely brilliant. And if anyone is attracted to the, well, that's probably the wrong word. <laughs> If anyone really likes to look at this fish, then you should absolutely think about getting some. They are such cool fish. Really, really interesting to watch. Cool behavior on them as well. Most of them tend to sit up here, look. So this is the, the back end of the aquarium. Let me just step back and explain the situation. So this, well, that's very bright. We have a rotational flow going on. So if I come up this way, shows it a little bit better. We've got a wave maker in the back section pushing water all the way down here and it swoops around. That's why you can see the val Valison area is swooping around with it. There you go. There's the Pandagara. Look at him. Like, they're so cool. I don't I don't know why they're so cool. Look, look. Ugh, really, really like them. So yeah, like I say, they tend to hang around this area. All this, by the way, is new. I didn't plant any of that there. That's all grown around this way. It's starting to fill out now with all this jungle val, isn't it? I might need to trim it back at some point soon because it is getting a bit silly. But at the moment, it looks perfect. It looks like a, a proper little creek in a river system, doesn't it? So on the top, I've also got some Anubius growing sort of in and out of the water. Some of it's adapted. That leaf right in the center is new growth, so it's fine out of the water. The yellowy sort of bits are ones that are, I, I think they were grown um, submerged and now are trying to adapt, but you know, it's always difficult. The new growth though is always good. But yeah, doesn't it look so good? I love this tank. Nice and simple in terms of filtration. It's just got this little mini canister filter you can see underneath there. That goes up here and it's just inlet and outlet right next to the wave maker. The wave maker's controllable, but I've got it turned right up because it is a nano one. It's just enough flow, I think, to simulate the river that I was trying to achieve. Now for lighting, it's just a really budget-friendly LED strip, and I just hung it off of these two shelves because I don't know why I did that. Why did I do that? I don't know, it just looks quite good, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, nice little tank. Let me feed these guys some of these algae wafers because these lot go nuts for it. Oh yeah, I forgot. We've also got, um, oh, there they are. Borneo suckers, apparently, or also known as hill stream loaches. It's like a subspecies of, I think there's two different varieties in here, so I'm not entirely sure, but how cool are these as well? Oops, sorry, buddy. Sorry, sorry, calm down. Just, just, just hang about. I want to show everyone how cool you are. You're really not liking this, so I'm going to back off slowly. <laughs> but yeah, look at that. Nice little algae build up on it. I don't scrub any of the rocks in this aquarium. I'm, to be honest, I don't on most of my aquariums. But this one, I really just absolutely leave it because all those little... They love the algae, don't they? I also supplement it, though, with the wafers, as I'll show you now. We want these ones. There we go. Right, there we go. Just push down on it. Split it into two. There we go, there's three bits there. So I'll put one there, one up there, and then one right in the middle here so we can see it in a minute. They'll be all over that in no time at all. <laughs> yeah, so it's the Aquarian algae wafers. You'll see how good they are. Watch this, give it a few minutes till they sort of sense that it's there and they'll be all on it. That's what I'm talking about, look. They all crowd around it, they all want a piece. And in doing so, they've actually just lodged it, making it even harder to get it. <laughs> look at them, they're so cool, aren't they? I told you, yeah. My absolute favorite, I think, are the Pandagaras. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love the hill streams as well, but there's something about the yellow and the black and then those sort of orange tails on them, they just, they just look fantastic, don't they? Right, moving on. So this is my discus aquarium, it's a four foot tank and then it's two foot deep as well, so it's, it's quite a deep tank. Oh that's a bug zapper by the way, I've added that recently, I've been getting a few of the flies now the warmer weather's come in. Anyway, that's not important. Yeah, so this is like a dual island composition that's kind of merged into one big thing. Um, it's changing soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything out and I'm going to have a bare bottom Then I'm going to have all of the, um, the hardscape sort of looping in and just touching a couple of points on the base. This tank you see has suffered with some cyanobacteria and that's because inside of these islands I didn't fill anything in and there's just loads and loads of waste in there. I know that because when I do water changes loads of stuff comes out and I try and get in as best as I can but obviously without completely moving it all I can't just you know get it out. 
But anyway, that's going to change soon. But for now, it's doing well. It's looking good. I'm growing out all the Java ferns and things as well. The fish are super, super healthy. Really happy as well. There is six of the Stenka discus in here. And then there is about nine or ten Corys. I've got three of these. Um, no, I've got six in total of these. Six of the albino, <laughs> albino Corys. And, uh, and then there's a Sturby right back there. Can you see him? Yeah, of course you can see him. Just pecking away. I've got six of those as well. Oh, there's some Siamese algaetas as well. Basically, all the fish are doing really, really well, but the scape itself isn't. And that's why I'm going to rescape it, but it'll look really good. What I've got planned for it is so cool. It'll be more space as well for the fish to swim in. Um, this guy at the back is always there. You guys have seen him a few times now on my videos. He loves his little spot. He's just come forward because he thinks that we're going to feed him, and we are. So what I do is I feed him a nice flake. Uh, I mix up their food quite a bit actually, but there's a pellet that I have from Aquarian and there's a flake that I use as well. The flake's good, it doesn't foul the water or anything. It's quite funny because they'll all get ready now for me to feed them. I'll put it in, they won't eat it until it's all down on the bottom. I turn off all the wave makers and stuff as well, otherwise it just goes everywhere. There we go, look, straight away the Corys are out there finding it all. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so there's a bronze one. There's a bronze one going around the back there. Another bronze one over here. They'll all find it in a minute. As if the discus don't eat it all first. <laughs> guys, that food isn't for you. Right, I'll feed them quickly. I normally do it all together, but I was just separating it to show you guys. Anyway. And there we go. Now, I know that that looks like a lot of food, but remember, they're big fish. They've got big bellies, and it is a flake, remember? So it's not like, you know, compact or anything, is it? So I just do normally do two big pinches per day, and then obviously the sprinkle as well for the uh, for the Corys on the bottom there. They're all coming around now and having a look, aren't they? So yeah, the discus seem to like watch it float to the bottom, and then they peck it off of everything. They seem to like that a lot more than getting it from the, from the water column or from the surface. They don't really get anything from the surface, if I'm honest. They always wait for it to fall and land on stuff. Such peaceful fish. They're really awesome, aren't they? So up next, we have got my Blackwater Neon Tetra Aquarium. I set this up oh, a really long time ago now. I think about four months, something like that. It's a very, very simple sort of scape. So we've got big pieces of wood sort of leaning into the aquarium, just touching a few points. I've tried to ke keep it like sort of looking really natural. So just uh, some leaves and some botanicals just sort of chucked in and I let the flow take them where they wanted to sit. I think it looked really, really good. So what this tank is, for those who don't know what a black water tank is, it's kind of mimicking the natural environment of the Neon Tetra, where they're from in the Amazon. Um, there's lots of leaf litter on the floor and when the floods come, they just raise that water level up, picking up all of the dead leaves and just staining all the water, this cool sort of botanical brown tea, I don't even know. <laughs> tannins, they're called tannins, not tannings. <laughs> I keep saying tannings so often and people keep telling me off. Tannins, yeah, and we've got some really nice floating plants on the top. We've got salvinia and we've got, uh, that's mini water lettuce. It's mini because this stuff can get absolutely huge, like, like this if you don't get the mini variety. So yeah, there's four of those in there. I think they're really pretty as well. And they've got like this sort of really nice velvety texture to them. And they send down the roots into the water that pull out any sort of badness and nitrites, traits, tr all that, all the traits, <laughs> all the traits and trites. So yeah, there's a really cool tank, very simple setup. Uh, inside, look, we'll have a look. Really cheap sort of filter there. It's just a cheap, like your, your Sun Sun or All Pond Solutions canister filter. I've got a inline heater as well. Um, I got I put that in there because I didn't really want to have it on show apart from, you know, that the inlet and outlet. I didn't want to have a heater as well, but I think it works really well. And if I step back, you can see, you know, next to 
the, the tank, the discus tank, and it's just completely different. It just adds really nice variety to the studio. Now next to it over in the corner is a random bowl. Now this is my bonsai tree, Monte Carlo bonsai tree, and a load of hair grass. But I just sort of put it over a while ago. It's not had a water change in like months. And interestingly enough, there's no light on it, but look, we've got a full hair grass carpet, some of the most healthy hair grass I've ever seen in any of my aquariums. And the same goes for the Monte Carlo. It's quite hard to see because obviously there's no light on it, but yeah, I use this now to sort of harvest off pieces of hair grass for new setups. So you can see it was this whole area and it's even starting to grow back as well, look. <laughs> crazy isn't it you spend all this money on the tech and amazing substrates this is just a bit of sand and i think i put some like soily stuff underneath it and i just left it without any light and it's growing the best hair grass i've ever had <laughs> crazy so up next in this section here we've got a load of my well i like to call them like tinker tanks i don't really show them that much or do anything to them but i often it's one of the first places i come into in the studio having a little look around and um, this one here did have a load of awesome rotala at the back. It's got some shrimp in there, just growing some nice plants. I mean, this is a no filter setup here with some chili respora in. There's seven in there in total, but four at the front currently. Going through a little bit of a hazy phase. No filter tanks sometimes do this when they're not like old, old, where they just sort of uh, haze up and then they go clear again. And you know, eventually though, if it's been set up long enough, it goes like the bowl you see where you don't touch it. Again, that's got no filter and it just stays as perfect as that. Uh, next to it, just some trident fern on some wood, nothing actually in there, uh, nothing in that tank. And then this one here has got a load of moss propagating, some moss balls, some mulm and um, killifish. So it's got my liartail killifish, there's also the rocket killifish in here as well, which are currently hiding. It's quite early by the way guys, so most of these fish haven't even run up, uh, woken up yet. <laughs> next to it, just some something, I don't even know. And then this was my um, little desktop one I set up where I pair in for um, my um, and the guppy fry and there's still quite a few in there there's no light on at the moment but they're all growing nicely and eventually I have quite quite a few to put in like a new setup somewhere but yeah all just sort of tinker tanks and I enjoy looking at them but oh coming over here here he is yeah this is ember and he's so vibrant that he really does go weird on the camera but in real life he's like bright sort of orange slash red it's really weird, it's really hard to capture him on camera. His tank needs a little bit of a scrape down, some algae on the glass, but this is a temporary setup. I'm gonna do something really cool for him, probably in this tank actually, and I might even be adding some more goldfish. I did say I wasn't gonna get any more because recently, well over the past uh, one, and a, one and three quarter years, we've lost three of the goldfish that were with him, the other ranchu, they were ranchu gold, goldfish, he's an oranda goldfish, um, but they were, they were a lot smaller from the same batch, and over time they've just sort of They've died out, and I think it was because of um, you know swim bladder issues. Well, I know it was because of swim bladder issues, which is very common in Ranchu goldfish, apparently. So if I was to get some more goldfish to go with him, it would definitely be some more Arandas, I think, anyway. And I'd definitely get some that are about, about his size, because hopefully they're past any sort of growth issues internally that would cause problems. It's just a few plants in at the moment that I just keep there and pick them out at any time. But, you know, it's good for the water quality, so I leave them in there with him. And below him is a plant grow out tank now there's no fish in here apart from cleanup crew so auto sink list and i've got snails and i've got a mono shrimp but that's it again it's just somewhere i like growing little things that i can add to setups so we've got stuff on hand and don't have to wait for stuff to come in and on an order so that there's some really nice uh booster phalandra there it's been in there for a while and a, a mono shrimp cleaning below it and some more booster phalandra behind it Rotala bonsai. I mean, there's loads of different stuff that I like to keep. I'm kind of a bit of a plant collector. <laughs> and I really just like picking up stuff that I've not seen before and just plonking it in one of these tanks. But I tell you what, it is Ember's feeding time. Let's give him some food. Uh, over to here. This is, oh, there he is, the goldfish food. So I've got specific goldfish food for them. We'll take this one, the aquarium. Got it's specific for goldfish, active, bright, and healthy. High in vitamins C and E helps support optimal growth. Ideal because you are a beast. Let's give him some. Tap, tap, tap. There we go. Look, he knows it's coming. He's getting. It's already opening his mouth. Now, um, people often say that with goldfish, you don't want to um, feed them on the surface. So what I do is take a pinch and only release it once it's underneath the water. That way it just sinks and doesn't sit on the top. Apparently gulping in the air can be bad for the goldfish, apparently. There we go, look, see? It's 
So it sinks straight back, straight down to the bottom. He'll hoover it up. He's such a pig. <laughs> Come on, down here, down here. He'll get it, he'll get it. Some went to the surface that he's looking at, but hopefully he won't sort of gulp at them. Leave it. Leave it alone. Come down, come down. Good boy. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, look at Hoover, food Hoover. Anyway, he's brilliant. Right, moving on. So that's that section. Up next, we've got my epistogramma tank at the top here with a row of Otto Sinclair's. What are you guys doing? Synchronized eating or something? <laughs> Oh, we've got some tap water conditioner as well, as well there. API tap water conditioner, this stuff's great. Uh, you just need a tiny little bit of it and it just goes such a long way. That bottle here lasts me, even with all my tanks, a massively long time. Anyway, so yeah, this is my Epistogramma Hung Schloy tank. There he is, there's the male. Yes, right on cue. He wants some food, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely stunning fish. He also has a female, oh, right next to him. I didn't even notice, there she is, right next to him. So if you look, the males look really, really good colours. Oh, sorry, I moved too quickly. If you move too quick, you get scared. Female though, she's not scared of anything, look. Oh, she's just darted back there as well. <laughs> there we go, all good. Right, so down here we've got a load of fairy quarries. We've got Amano's cleaning up. This tank is getting really, really mature now and looking fantastic. I really do like it. It's a very simple triangular composition design. And these, um, the Ludwigia here, super red, turning really nicely red and that's really good because these are just cheap lights most of the lights I've got on, on my tanks I think 95% are all budget friendly cheap lights or LED floodlights and then we've just got a cheap hang on the back filter and it's just you know look at it look this is what we can do with just low low amounts of cash because it doesn't cost a ton for any of this stuff I mean don't get me wrong a fish tank is still a luxury item so it's still not cheap cheap but it is you know affordable is what I would call it and then down below it this is going to be, there's no fish in here at the moment guys, apart from cleanup crew, again, autosynclis we've got in there, we've got Amano's, snails, the usual, but this is going to be the tank for some Crebensis pear, which I'm picking up soon. I wanted to let it grow in nicely first, and now it's starting to look really good. Got some nice little algae patches on the Sirius stone, giving that sort of realism. And the plants are growing great now, getting really, really good color. This is the same kit that we've seen over <laughs> there all oh, the white balance has just gone crazy sort yourself out there we go <laughs> that tank there is the same as this one here so it comes with the light and oh i haven't put the filter case on there we go yeah it comes with the light and a hang on the back filter and i just think it's such a good deal and it's really affordable as well so it's the super fish uh, kit guys look it up if you can i don't think it's available in america yet but you know hopefully will be at some point point. and then if i spin all the way around in this section here there is nothing <laughs> the, f the camera can't even focus there's so nothing let me just do that there we go right so here is going to be a massive four foot well i suppose four foot isn't massive but you know some of my biggest aquariums it's gonna be a four foot aquarium going across there it's gonna be an ecosystem aquarium so like minimal minimal water changes just some to get it going loads of plant life and uh, predators live bearers that kind of thing are just really really good experiment just to sit back and watch that's all coming soon but down here i made this cool little sort of i don't know stand slash storage area and all my electrics from the powerpoint here Probably not the safest idea with the water overhanging it, but you know, I keep the water level low so you don't ever get any water anywhere near any of this stuff. But yeah, look, if you guys ever wonder how you power all the equipment I've got, I've constantly got a supply of batteries on the go and there's two of everything so I can constantly swap it around. This one can power anything as well. Anyway, it's not about that. Here is Phantom in his tank. This uh, is my Peace Lily Aquarium, so you can see the Peace Lily at the back there. So the build video for this, guys, has had like, I don't know, nearly a million views now in like no time at all so very shortly it should break the million views it's at like 800,000 or something at the moment but people really liked it I'm going to do something similar again soon but with a twist because obviously you don't just want to do the same thing again but this guy's so cool isn't he look <laughs> so basically we've got a load of stones in there big pebbly stones that like sort of go up to the back and then I made a structure out of the wood you can just see in between it all and just put in the piece of these into that area so that the roots are submerged in water and they just pull nutrients then from the water column when you're feeding the fish and the poop and that and they grow really nice. Just a very simple clip on desk lamp, the one that you just use for doing work or something on and filter wise down here we've just got this tiny little canister filter. The outlet is this side look just going along the inlet is over there and it just works really really well 
I think I've done three water changes on this tank since I set it up. <laughs> it's like a perfect balance because the light is not just blasting onto the water. Most of it's getting diffused by the leaves, which means you just don't get any algae. Look, and the plants grow incredibly slow, don't get me wrong because of that, but you don't really want them growing really fast in a setup like this. But yeah, really nice, awesome. Right guys, that is the end of the tour. No, I'm only kidding. I've got a whole nother studio. Let's go take a look. Right, where to start, where to start? Oh, first of all, this little room here that connects the two studios, I use as plant grow out, like storage tanks. So this one's for epiphyte plants. So Java ferns, Anubias, Busa Philandra. And then the rest are just, you know, tanks that I plonk stuff in. <laughs> so they got like, these ones got two internal filters and the cheap sort of lights. Again, I'll leave the lights and filters in the description for you guys so you can buy them if you're interested. Again, same up here, the cheap lights, and then this one's got hang on the back filters. This one, internal filters, just said that. <laughs> and then next to here, I've got another storage area for a load of hardscape as well, ready for builds at any time. But first of all, I think we should start with the racking system. So over here, top left, just some plant storage. And I've also got in here a load of cherry shrimp where are you guys? They're really good grade, actually. And obviously, just as I say that, I can't see any. <laughs> ah, there we go. There's one. So look look at how bright and vibrant he is. Really deep red. Lovely. Yeah, next to him, we have got Captain America's tank. <laughs> no, this is Hellboy. He's a Hellboy better fish. This is his tank. Cheap little hang on a back filter. Tiny little one, but, you know, it just keeps the water flow flowing around gently and some surface agitation really really nice tank this is actually one of my favorite tanks in both studios funnily enough even though it's just a small nano one so yeah we've got the better fish we've got a couple of auto sink lists and some um, amano shrimp obviously you guys can notice a, a trend going on there above it the light we've just got a strip that goes all the way across it's, again it's a budget friendly one and next to hellboy's tank we've got my guppy tank so these are endler guppies and that, this is the reason why I built this tank. That male there, like, is it a snake skin? I think it's a snake skin. He's got two females in him. And as you can probably see already, there's babies dotted around. So hopefully I get some more of that male. It's my all time favorite guppy. I bred it myself. It's been grown all the way from a tiny little baby. And look at it now from fry fry is what you call baby fish i don't know why i keep calling them babies but yeah it's a cool little tank isn't it kind of wild but i, I do try and tame it and keep that that hole going down the middle that adds a really really good sense of depth but yeah awesome moving on down here another super fish tank we've got two super fish tanks i'll get to this one in a minute but this is the platy tank so i went for like classic sort of nature aquarium style i think i pulled it off it looks great a big punchy bit of ludwigia in the middle there so we've got some dust algae on some of the uh, rocks. That's okay. There's a cleanup crew in there. They can deal with that. We've got six of the platys, males and females, is, is the correct ratio as well. So we should soon start to see some babies. The tank's only been set up for, oh, a couple of weeks now. So it's a bit soon to see anything going on yet. But very shortly, we'll, get, we'll, we'll definitely get babies. They're live bearers. I mean, <laughs> these guys breed as much as guppies. And, and guppies are about the only thing I can breed. So that's good. In the tank with them, we've also got some gold laser quarries which i'm struggling to see at the moment and next to it we've got the black water tank this is newly set up it's only been set up for like four days we've got oh oh look at that males chasing the females at the top there that's really interesting to see i never ever see any sort of tetra breeding action so this is awesome same again down there look that's a female and a male the female's the big round one and we've also got a pistogramma in here where are you gone? He's hiding at the back. Where did you go? I just saw, there he is. That's the male right there, look. Come forward. Oh, look at that. This is the Vieja Super Red. It looks so, so good. That's the male. There's a female as well. And the female's just behind, look, you can see there. They're both, they really like this little section over this side, it seems to be. So I created this tank, so it has loads of little sort of little nooks and crannies for the fish to be able to go in we've got the botanicals all in there the leaves we've got the tanned effect of the water which is you know replicating like i said before the neon tetra tank this is sort of much more like what the water they're from so yeah it's really cool we're getting seeing some great behavior as well at the top we've got some floating plants we've got salvinia 
and yeah it's the same light and same hang on about filter as all the other superficial you've seen they keep the theme going and they just look really good don't they and next to it we have got the cube aquariums on my shrimp rack so up the top here let's start over this side we've got a load of yellow cherry shrimp i've just fed them these tiny little wafers and uh, specifically for shrimp they are and this one's completely overgrown this is the next one to be scaped at the moment it's just super healthy and the fit and the, not the fish sorry <laughs> the uh, shrimp are doing really well next to them this is the most recent one i've scaped it needs a trim up very shortly we've got some punchy rotala is that rotunda folia or hr i think it's the hr anyway um yeah so look and we've got the crystal blacks in here they've just they're just getting their food as well they've all come forward uh this auto is about to come out actually he's the only one in there but he's done a fantastic job of cleaning the whole thing up look at how good it looks i don't like to I, I like to stay away from as much maintenance as i can in all my tanks because i've got so many there's only so much i can do so i try and get the plants and the fish to do all the cleaning for me and to the most part it works really well but yeah really nice shrimp these crystal blacks absolutely love them right next to them the crystal reds so a few have come forward uh, more will come forward as time goes by actually but these are really nice that one there is a quite a high grade look so the more white apparently the more high grade i don't really know why i like the red ones best like look at that one look at him or her actually actually i think that's a her she looks fantastic and i'll land on that rock she'll peck away at all those greeny bits i don't know why considering the fact i've just put food in for you where's betty betty's my beast one betty is huge it's the biggest shrimp i've ever seen hopefully she'll come forward in a bit there's loads of them in the pearl weed there so they all come forward i've only just put the food in so they, they might be a while before they're all forward if if they do and betty comes i really will come back to her to show you because it's crazy so next to those guys is the blue dream shrimp now We've, in the end, we've got a bit of a mix going on, a bit of a skittle sort of scenario, but I don't mind. I just love them. I love that they're all, shrimp, all the shrimp are breeding. That's what I want, and it's, it's going great. There's so many more shrimp in here now than when I first set it up. Let me step back. So I went for like a rock sort of look, some plants around it. Yeah, not, nothing complicated. None of these are. That was deliberate. It's just, it's really to showcase the shrimp, and I thought that these would look great against the white gravel, which they have. This stuff is kind of gross. Maybe I need to get a credit card down there to clean that up or something. But yeah, overall though, really happy with this one. This is the most prolifically bred tank. Is that right? You know, <laughs> this tank breeds the most out of all of them. Um, I'm still yet to get some breeding on some of the crystals. Although I did see a couple of babies at some point in here. I'm not seeing them since. So maybe they've grown up and I didn't see them in that time period. I don't know. But yeah, that's really cool. And down here, now none of these escaped or anything done with them. But we've got different types of shrimp. So this one, Santa Claus shrimp apparently. Here is just some cherries. Not that many in there actually because I moved them to other escapes. And over here we've got some tigers. Um, I don't know if they're showing up. Are they showing up? So this is the next one I'm going to scape out. The tigers look great. They need something that shows them really, really well. So I'm going to do that. Down the bottom, we've got nothing but some plants, Amanos. And in here, we've got a couple of gardener... Um, got a killifish. There we go. <laughs> Hello. That's the male there, I think, anyway. There's a male and a female. I'm going to do something cool for them as well. Right, they're moving along. So <laughs> this is an interesting one. I've deliberately let this plant the plants in this tank grow like this <laughs> they're completely overgrown don't get it wrong it should be hacked back the reason i'm not is because this i'm going to use these plants in this for a big project coming up a four foot tank so i want some decent length ones and these are all at a really good length that i can pick and choose what i want from them basically we've got some wood in there and some rocks like all the tanks <laughs> and we've got about 10 ember tetras there's only a few coming out at the moment but they all like to go in and amongst it it's early in the morning and uh you know, they're just sort of waking up. We've got an auto synclus at the front there. I think there's about four auto synclus in there. I've got a mano shrimp. You know, the usual kind of thing. But again, yeah, nothing too interesting, but just a wild, wild box. <laughs> we've got loads of moss. We've got loads of pearl. And we've got loads of limnophila as well, which you can see from the top here. And that's the plant that I want to harvest for an ecosystem project. It grows so fast and it'll be really, really good for, you know, making perfect water conditions for, for what I've got in mind. Anyway, moving next to that. We have got the new Pleco tank. Now, I'll get to why it's in here in a minute, but basically the tank opposite is where it was. But the Pleco is in here on his own, and we will see him because there he is, always there. 
me focus there we go so it's a golden nugget pleco many of you know this already who know the channel and that is where he sits <laughs> so i just set up this little tank like this just so we could uh, see him more because i wasn't seeing when he's destroying the plants in the amazon aquarium again we'll get to that in a second but yeah nice little setup it's, it's only new i'm going to get some other fish in there with him as well because it's going to be a bit lonely the little fella isn't he so i want to get the cleanup crew and all that in there it's going through his ugly phase at the moment because it's so new the silicates are making diatoms all that sort of thing and next to it, look, this is an interesting one. So this is my sparkling grimy tank. Can we see any of them? They're quite shy fit. Oh, there's one. There we go. You're going to come forward? Come and show off your sparkles, sparkling grimy. It's a really natural sort of look. And I've deliberately left all this algae in the foreground because I just think it looks really, really good, doesn't it? So basically, we've got some bog wood. Oh, look, there we go. Stay there, stay there. Look at, the, look at that grimy. Look at how good he looks. The colours and everything. He's so, so nice. There should be more. Where are you guys? I mean, I know it's... Uh, oh, there's one as well. I've got about six in here, I think. Look at the colours. So, so nice. Really good fish. And sometimes when I'm just sat here, like, working on other tanks or anything, I start... Whoop, <laughs> I start to hear them croaking. You can hear them croaking. It's really, really quite loud, actually. And and uh, it's not like... It's, I forget that they do it, so I'll, sat, I'll be sat here and I'll, I'll hear the croaking and think, what on earth was that? And then I'll remember. <laughs> yeah, we've got some um, Hygrophila Simensis 53B growing out at the top towards that light. That's the Fluval light, the Fluval nano i think it is approval plant nano yeah good light it shouldn't really be on a tank this size really it should be on something nano but i didn't want anything too bright deliberately because i was trying to create that sort of murky um i don't know little stream or something i think it works quite well looks good doesn't it and then right next to this tank we've got a big hardscape selection we've got loads of different kinds of woods a bug zapper in this room as well uh gravels and different things and some rocks down there and then next to that i've got a spare tank i'm not actually doing anything with it at the moment i'm not even sure what i'm going to do but it was there and i put it on this stand because that was also spare <laughs> got a nice plant in the corner here i don't know what plants these are guys i'm not good with sort of house plants but i've had it for a long time and it's growing really well and nice and it overshadows the uh the, well this was the better sorority tank um there you go this but there's just one better left now so that's a female better fish you can see there the champion of champions basically there was like five i think i put in together and this was the only one i was seeing ever so what I did was I removed the other ones because I just felt like if they if I can't see them then they're obviously not enjoying their time in my tank because they can't move anywhere and I literally never saw them it took me ages to catch them as well I had to basically take the whole thing apart so it's not looking insanely good but that's because I it has a purpose now the purpose of this tank is that it grows moss for me for other setups look you can see like where I have trimmed and where we've got no trimmings and growing backs, but this is Taiwan moss and this tank just grows it so, so well. And for that reason, I haven't taken it down because it's just, it works so good for providing, you know, mosses I need for all the other tank builds. It's got Otto Sinclair in, it's got a Siamese algae eater, a really nice Siamese algae eater actually. And we've got some HRA there as well, some floating plants. Yeah, it, that's all it really is. It's just there uh, to provide me with the moss i just said that <laughs> right guys up next the piece of resistance <laughs> it's a lego movie joke um yeah this is the amazon aquarium so it's you know it's, i've saved it right to the end it appears to be the showstopper you know the the big piece uh, basically i built this how, do, how long ago about this about four months ago I, I built this now i think it's been full of water and fish for about three months but yeah you can see it's like above water below water i've just had a nice trim up of the fog oh look there we go right on cue there's the male uh, the male german blue ram looking really really nice i'm starting to feed them up they're looking a little bit too skinny i'm adding more and more food to the fish nowadays because all the fish are getting bigger and they need more food so what do we say we do that now watch this back to the aquarium food these guys go nuts for it watch this so for this i use all the products i've got the flake you know for most of the fish and then we've got sinking pellets for the quarries and then i've got algae wafers for all the bristle nose plecos and you know and also the quarries take a nibble at it as well and so do the ottos so yeah we've got a good mixture there for all the fish because obviously there's a lot of fish in here and they all have their own sort of specific needs so let's get all those in now okay let's do the flake first I tap on it, look, then they all know food is coming for sure. I have to do it quick because they start going crazy. 
Right, here we go. Again, it looks like a lot, but remember there's a lot of fish here and it is a flake, isn't it? So they will eat that in no time. <laughs> okay, look at that. It's been like a few seconds and most of it's already gone. <laughs> So what I like about a flake is that when you put it in, you've got big bits, you've got small bits. So you're actually providing for all the different fish sizes. Just, just It's just nice and simple, isn't it? And it's just, it's easier for me as well. Like I could just do one pinch and that you know, feeds all of them. But then look, the bristle nose is down the bottom there. These guys are ready for some food as well. So they know it's food time as well, I think, from the tap. Because they always come forward when I tap as well. So just goes to show, fish are clever. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, yeah, there's one over there as well. Right, let's get some sinking food in for those guys as well. Okay, now we've got the aquarium pellets. Let's go in, do a sprinkle. They fall to the bottom. Now some of the fish will peck at them, but they won't actually, um, you know, eat very many of them. Look, even the uh, Colombians, they spit it back out again, but it goes all the way to the bottom. There we go. And then we've got the algae wafers as well. A couple of these and then I just break them up and put them in like you've seen before. So there we go, look, that's what I like about a, a sort of flake food because look how clean the tank is already. I fed minutes ago all that food and it's already clean. Oh, 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 we've got some aggression going on down here. The bristle nose trying to get to their algae wafers and uh, some of the fish are a little bit interested at the moment, but that won't be long. Go on then, son. Go on, get your wafers. <laughs> so there's one there, there's one there, and then there's another guy over here, some autos. They're all coming forward now. Look look at how good this is. This is so fun to do. You can just sit back. If I'm not filming like I am now, I feed and I just sit here for a while, and you just stay still and you can just observe the behavior, and it's really, really fun to watch. This is the most enjoyable tank in terms of in action obviously you're going to have a lot of action look how many fish there are <laughs> but yeah i've tried to keep it sort of natural look rather than going for an aquascape if you like so this is like a proper fish tank i think you know i'm letting the plants kind of do their thing but sort of coasting them in the right direction so what you're seeing here all these nice different plants this is ludwigia there's different varieties and then the foreground plant is the sag and that's uh, it just sort of grows really fast it actually covers up most of these areas as well but again you've got to keep on top of it otherwise it just looks a mess in no time but yeah this is my favorite favorite tank in terms of big projects and right guys on to the final piece this is the buddha aquarium so many of you would have seen recently i have added these uh, cherry barbs they are technically they're albino cherry bar barbs sorry some of you say albino <laughs> in the uk we say albino and they're long fin variety let me zoom in on some of them there you go look look at how cool he looks the ca again the camera finds it hard to pick them up like because their colors are so bright it doesn't really know what to do <laughs> But yeah, awesome little fish. I'm going to be getting more for here. They've just huddled over here because the lights haven't been on long and I've just come steaming in with a camera in their face. Usually they're in the central area where this guy is here. It'd be good to see them coming out of it. But yeah, this is uh, heavily planted, isn't it? So I was going for like the Buddha in the forest sort of thing that's grown all around it. Life, just peace, tranquility. I think I've achieved that. We've got a lot of moss going on. We've got Juncus repens. We've got Ludwigia palustris red. Alternamphra, Renekiki, I can't say that. <laughs> it's still very much a work in progress. I'm going to be hacking it right back again. The last trim session, I didn't do enough because it's come back straight away. There's no CO2 in this tank, guys. There's no CO2 in any of my tanks, remember. So what we've basically got is a framework of manzanita wood, and then everything else is sort of placed around that. And there is a pathway that runs up the middle, but it needs clearing again. I just, it's so beautiful that I can't bring myself really to trim it right back. Do you know what I mean? Like it's, it's so nice and natural looking. Anyway, I want to add more barbs to the tank. I'm just not sure what ones yet. These are the first barbs I've ever kept. So you want, you got, you got to be careful with aggression issues with barbs and things like that. So I need to find the right ones. There's also your usual cleanup crew in here as well. Um, the auto sink list. I've got actually um, some, I think I've got three albino bristle nose in here as well. In fact, let me find them because they're really nice. Normally when I come around here, I can see some. Oh, there's one. Just hiding on the wood there. <laughs> Can't really show them that well though, can I? But yeah, from every angle, look, this tank just looks so, so lush and nice. And again, that's why I find it difficult to trim it because I just love it. Absolutely love it. 
Right, that's the end of the tour, guys. I hope you've enjoyed that one. If you have, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button. I will see you on the next one.